Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or oh, hello if you are new. If you are new here, my name is Mari Suggs and I am a self-published author and writer of romance novels. But in today's video, we are going to be talking about my book companion journal. This is the third edition of my book companion journal. The first one looks like this, and this is just a regular fiction companion journal. And the second one I did was this one, and this is for if you're writing a nonfiction book. So if you don't know what this is, this is basically exactly what it sounds like, a companion for the book that you are writing. If you're anything like me, you probably have a ton of journals, a ton of notebooks, a ton of post-its everywhere when you are writing a book. You might even keep notes on your phone. I've been known to do that many times. But the problem with that, I found that when I was looking for something specific about the book, I couldn't find the note where I put it because I was keeping it in so many different places. Keeping track just became nearly impossible. So that's why I created my book companion journal so that I just had one place for one book that I could keep all my notes in and it's worked out wonderfully. And this is the first time that I'm going to get to use the fall edition because I just started writing a new book and I am so excited. I haven't written anything new in a very long time and the fall time is my favorite time of year as I assume is probably y'all's too because everybody loves fall. But anyways, what I really wanted to share with you guys really quick before we jump into the video because I'm going to give you an inside look on what's inside the book that I think you guys are really going to enjoy and love and you will probably want to get your copy before NaNoWriMo comes because you know it's just around the corner, Preptober is just around the corner. So this is the perfect time to start getting all your resources and tools in your hands so that you are ready to write your next novel. So the reason I am so excited and I am making the video now is because I will be using this one right now because I just started writing my new novel. and. Not only do I write romance novels, but now I will be writing Christian romance novels. And I'm so excited that I have taken the leap and just made that change because I do everything Christian. I listen to Christian music, watch Christian TV, watch Christian movies. I am just like in love with that world, but Although I feel like the music is on par and the music is just phenomenal and I love it, other parts like movies and TV, I feel are a little behind the time. Sometimes the subject matter or the conversations they have or the things that they say or just the overall, overall production of movies and films are not up to par and I think they're missing the mark and I just want to be part of that world, part of that change where I can just really keep the Christian community entertained and in love with Christian work. So that is my hope for the future and I am just excited to use the book companion journal for the new book that I am writing. So if you guys want to see exactly what's inside the book, make sure you stick around and watch the rest of the video. Okay guys, so here's a closer look at the cover. It's so cute. All the fall feels. I just love it. And then when you open it, it's going to be just like the other one. You can insert a copy of your cover there if you'd like. And then it just tells you a little bit about the book. And then here, you, that's where you keep track of the book. So memory journal for the book of your writing. And then obviously the author, which is going to be you. And then look. How cute. Each section comes with a little quote and what it's about. Inside, we're going to be focused on different questions. And this is all about just getting you prepared for writing, getting you in the right state of mind as it states right here. So you're going to be asked some questions. You're going to fill it out. And then it keeps going on and on and on. 
And then you're going to go to the next section, which is my writing bucket list with another little quote. And then the question here is 20 things I hope to accomplish with this book. And you're just going to list 20 things or even more things. I left it without lines and just gave you a lot of room for you to write whatever it is that you want to write. I even gave you another page. Next is creating rituals and routines. And I love this because this actually just helped me last week. I reverted back to my book companion journal, the one that I had completed. And I realized that one of the things I did all the time was light a candle. So I went ahead and lit this candle. And the minute I lit the candle and it started burning and it started filling my room up with this scent, instantly I got inspired to write even more because it reminded me of a time when I was super, super involved in my writing as far as like I was writing every day. I was really inspired. I didn't have a lot of, you know, things on my mind that were consuming me with worry and it was really focused all on writing. So I, this is why I love this section right here because it really is a place where I can return to time and time and again and remember that simple things like writing with a candle on it's just gonna take me to a next level. So as you can see, some of the questions here are my favorite music to listen to while I'm writing this book, my favorite beverage, my ritual that will help me stick to my goals are, my favorite time to write is, my favorite place to write, my favorite scent. There are just a lot of questions here that you can answer for yourself. That's gonna help you remember what state of mind really works for you when you are creating rituals and routines for your writing life. Next, we're going to get into about the book. And again, with a little quote, a nice little picture. And I really love this section. And I think I've probably updated this section the most because I found myself as I was writing that I was wanting some of those things and I didn't have them included in the book. So I went ahead and included them because I figured if I need them, then you guys are going to need them. So some of the questions that you get to answer about the book in that section are the genre of this book is the ideal audience is the word count for this book will be how many many points of view will the story have? From which point of view will the book be told? The story be told first, third? What's the tone and mood of the book? What's the theme of the book? What's the setting? And then you can list your characters. I found this little area right here, the character list. I needed that because I like to make a list of my characters right from the start and I was missing that section. So I went ahead and added that. I also added an area for outline. So I have outline act one, act two and act three. And then I added a section for summarizing the plot. Then here we go to creating plans and goals and a little quote and look how pretty that is. And I love this section because in this section, I can really start brainstorming of what it is that I really want to accomplish with this book. Like I said, one of my goals is to have my books turn into a movie or a TV. And I have such big, big dreams, big goals for just sharing the word of God that I know one way or another, this book and all my future projects are going to just reach the right people. I know that with the right state of mind, with God first, all things are possible. But that little section right there is going to be for you to create all kinds of goals and plans for your book. Next, we have creating triggers. And again, we have a little quote and a little picture. And what I mean by this is sometimes we get in a funk and we just need to remember what are some positive triggers that we can remember so that if we ever get into a funk, we can go back and activate those triggers. For example, is there a book that inspires you to write? Maybe you can go ahead and read that book again, write it in there. Is there an author that really inspires you? Are there movies that really inspire you? If you write them down here, because it might be different for each book that you write. So this might be a great place for you to make note of that. Also, is there a song that you like? Is there one thing that inspires you to write? What are the people that you can turn to for your writing? You can insert them right here. So this is just about 
creating positive triggers that are going to inspire you to write whenever you get stuck. Now we move on to the first draft. So now that you've created your goals and your triggers and you know exactly what it is that you want to do, you know exactly where your book is going, it's time to make notes of your book and I have given you enough pages to keep track of that and trust me, you will use every single page. I will show you a little bit of my previous book so you can see how much, much I actually use it. I also gave you my thoughts about the first draft, then... Not only do you get to make notes, but you also have a place to really focus on the changes that you have made. So here we are, you finished your draft, it's time to celebrate. And now you go on to just other drafts. So before I had a second draft, a third draft, now this is just draft notes. You can just continue to make your notes as you go on. Next, we have a section four. Tracking your words and progress. How cute is that? I love this book so much. And just, oh, I love fall, you guys. I don't know about you guys, but I love it. So here we have a word tracker. And then we have another time and word tracker. So you have your date, the time you started, time ended, hours and words. If you are interested in tracking your words in those in that way. I'm not usually one that needs to, oh, I started at two, I finished at five. That means I worked for three hours. I'm not usually one that does that, but I wanted to have the option in case I ever did feel the need to do that. But I do like to keep track of how many words I write every time I sit down to write, especially when it comes towards the deadline. So maybe in November when I need to get the 50,000 words, that's probably when I will start tracking. So I gave you three different trackers. And if you need more, you can always make a copy of it and just print it out. So that, that'll be easy enough for you to do that. And then I included a self-publishing checking list in case you are a self-published author like me. If you are not, then you don't have to use it. Um, it's only one little page, so it's not like it's going to be in your way. But if you are a self-published author, then it's a nice little checklist. Next, ah, oh, this is one of my favorite parts. It's capture the memories. Again, it has a little quote and the little pumpkins. And this is a place where I actually like to scrapbook. So what I end up doing is I use this section. I cut out pictures that maybe I posted on social media or pictures I just take on my own. And I just document the journey in picture form in this area so that's what this area is all about and i absolutely love it you can do it however you want you can if you want to take pictures like me and scrapbook it that's perfect if you want to use it as a journal and write you can do that too but i gave you a few pages to do that and then finally I gave you more notes. So trust me, like I said, you will be using that. Finally, actually, the last page is relax and color for all those times where you're just kind of like sometimes we just have to sit in our story and not write well this is a nice relaxing thing you can do you can just sit here and color all these few pages i didn't give you that many but enough to like unwind maybe you can do it before you write after you write while you're not writing and just thinking about your story but either way it's a very relaxing thing to do. So that is basically the book companion journal. I wanna share a little bit. I just wanna give you a quick insight into how I've used it real quick. Not this one, the original one. So you can see that I really use it and utilize it, you guys, so much. So I have three that I've used because they're basically for the three books that I've written. So this was the original cover that I was playing with. It was the proof and that's why it looks like that. But it's basically this and I use it so much. It's like completely full. As you can see here, this is how I document my journey of everything that I write. And this was the original cover for Between Us. I also used it for my nonfiction that I had written at the time. 
And I, again, I documented the journey. It was Christmas time. I was feeling very nostalgic. I miss my kids and my family a lot. So this was back in 2020, so you can imagine. So this was me documenting the journey. This is what I was talking about, scrapbooking. And I used it. This is the latest one. I put a cover on it and I don't love it. I don't love, I tried something new. I'm not really a cover person. I always like to keep things in its original form so I might end up taking this off but I did this back in 2019 because I was writing a Christmas novel and I wanted to it was just a little project I did so as you can see this one is also so used I can't I mean and this is like I wanted the, the publishing checklist and it wasn't on this version so I went ahead and printed the one that I did for this one and glued it to this book. As you can see, I use the books that I created. I absolutely love it. I hope you guys do. If you do, I will leave the link in the description box below for you guys to grab your own copy. It's on Amazon and I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you again in the next one. Bye.